How McDougal topped the score by Thomas E. Spencer. A peaceful spot is Piper's Flat. The folks that live around, they keep themselves by keeping sheep and turning up the ground. But the climate is erratic and the consequences are the struggle with the elements is everlasting war. We plough and sow and harrow, then sit down and pray for rain. And when we all get flooded out, we have to start again. But the folks are now rejoicing as they ne'er rejoiced before. For we've played Milongo cricket and McDougal topped the score. Milongo had a head on it and challenged us to play. A single innings match for lunch, the loser seemed to pay. We're not great guns at cricket, but we can't well say no. So we all began to practice and we let the reaping go. We scoured the flat for ten miles round to muster up our men, but when the list was totalled, we could only number ten. Then up spoke Big Jim Brady. He was always slow to speak. And he said, what price McDougal, who lives down Cooper's Creek? So we sent for old McDougal, and he stated in reply that he'd never played at cricket, but he'd half a mind to try he couldn't come to practice, he was getting in his hay. But he guessed he'd show the beggars from Longo how to play. Now McDougal was a Scotsman, a kenning one at that. So he started in to practice, with a paling for a bat. He got Mrs Mac to bowl him, but she couldn't run at all. So he trained his sheepdog Pincher how to scout and fetch the ball. Now, Pincher was no puppy, he was old and worn and grey, but he understood McDougal and accustomed to obey. But when McDougal yelled, fetch it, he would fetch it in a trice. But until the word was drop it, he would grip it like a vice. And each succeeding night they played until the light grew dim. Sometimes McDougal struck the ball, sometimes the ball struck him. Each time he struck... The ball would plough a furrow through the ground. And when he missed, the impetus would turn him three times round. The fatal day at length arrived. The day that was to see, Malongo bite the dust or Piper's flat knocked up a tree. Malongo's captain won the toss and sent his men to bat. And they gave some leather hunting for the men of Piper's flat. When the ball sped where McDougal stood, firm planted in his track, he shut his eyes and turned around and stopped it with his back. The highest score was 22, the total 66. When Brady sent a Yorker down and scattered Johnson's sticks. When Piper's flat went to bat for glory and renown, but like the grass before the scythe, the wickets come tumbling down. Nine wickets down for 17, with 50 more to win. Our captain heaved a sigh and sent McDougal in. Ten pounds to one, you lose it, cried a barracker from town. McDougal said, I'll take it, mon, and planked his money down. Then he girded up his moleskins in a self-reliant style, threw off his hat and boots and faced the bowler with a smile. He held the bat the wrong side out and Johnson with a grin stepped lightly to the bowling crease and sent a wobbler in. McDougal spooned it softly back and Johnson waited there but McDougal cried fetch it, started running like a hare. Malongo shouted victory, he's out as sure as eggs. When Pincher started through the crowd and ran through Johnson's legs. He seized the ball like lightning, then he ran behind a log. And McDougal kept on running while Malongo chased the dog. They chased him up, they chased him down, they chased him round and then... He darted through the slip rail as the scorer shouted ten. McDougal puffed, Malongo swore. Excitement was intense. As the scorer marked down twenty, Pincher cleared a barbed wire fence... Let us head him, shrieked Malongo. Brain the mongrel with a bat. 
Run it out, good old McDougal, yelled the men from Piper's flat. And McDougal kept on jogging, and then Pincher doubled back. And the scorer counted 40 as they raced across the track. McDougal's legs were going fast. Malongo's breath was gone, but still Malongo chased the dog. McDougal struggled on. When the scorer shouted 50, then they knew the chase would cease. And McDougal gasped out, drop it, as he dropped within his crease. Then Pincher dropped the ball, as instinctively he knew. Discretion was the wiser plan. He disappeared from view. And as Malongo's beaten men exhausted lay around, we raised McDougal, shoulder high, and bore him from the ground. We bore him to McGuinness's, where lunch was ready lay, and filled him up with whiskey punch, for which Malongo paid. We drank his health in bumpers and cheered him three times three. And when Malongo got its breath, Malongo joined the spree. The critics say they never saw a cricket match like that when McDougal broke the record in a game at Piper's Flat. The folks are all jubilating as they never did before for we played Malongo cricket and McDougal topped the score.